Welcome back Meshcore fans. I'm still absolutely buzzing from this weekend's Meshcore activities. It's been absolutely amazing here in the UK um, and I know some places in Europe as well that have experienced um, the exceptional tropospheric ducting conditions that can happen during the autumn time over this kind of area. So basically what this means is that large areas of the UK that wouldn't actually be normally able to communicate with each other can due to tropospheric ducting. So a good example of this is if you're in an area where there's a few of you and you're running a mesh core mesh, you have a few users that you know pretty well and you talk to regularly, all of a sudden you're probably seeing like hundreds of new um, users from lots of different areas. The public channel has become absolutely rammed, loads of conversation happening there and it's just like just absolutely right. what's going on this is crazy and this is probably due to the tropospheric ducting if you're well aware of radio stuff you'll know about this and you know if you're amateur radio op operator as well you will have know how to take advantage of these kind of conditions to make long distance con contacts without using the internet or anything like that so let's show you what i mean right here i'm looking at a real-time map um, in the Meshcore app of what's actually been picked up over real radio this is not anything to do with the internet it's not an internet map it's purely what has been received over this weekend and you can see there are literally hundreds of nodes here 300 or 298 to be correct in this particular um, map now the thing is with this is this won't be this probably won't be half the number of stations because Meshcore is quite a quiet protocol it will take quite a lot of time to actually see um, all of the stations on the map but you can actually see here there's huge numbers and huge areas have been connected so I'll, I'll show you the public chat in a minute um, but it's meant that we've been able to see stations over here, Northern, Northern Ireland. I've actually picked those up, you know, via our mesh. It's just absolutely mad <laughs> like to actually see this in, um, in, in real times. Now, we used to have a bit of this on Meshtastic, but the difference is on Meshcore, the messaging, because the messaging just works so much better. Um, let me just scroll up here for all these, all these messages and see if we can get back into the time um, where it was uh, really going for it. So I can see here the conversation, there was messages literally every minute and they were actually kind of back and forth as well. So you're not just seeing random messages where you didn't have, um, you know, you didn't know if you were getting replies or anything like that. Many people were actually finding they could, you know, have a full conversation here. So Kat here, hi, you're doing a YouTube. Um, shout out to Kat. We spoke quite a lot over this period. Um, I'm not sure we can make contact now, but we can, we certainly were being able to make contact during the, during the lift conditions um, but you can see here you know there's actual conversation happening here um, there's someone asking if I was on from the Andy from YouTube um, it, it's just bonkers and it was just literally like this for the whole weekend like from about Friday evening right the way through um, you can see co60 here shout out to you i kept bumping into you on the mesh every time i said morning um you were coming back here and we we had a, a good little conversation uh frequently on on the mesh over the period but i obviously can't reach um them now because it's about 160 70 kilometers away um anyone got the node on a ferry from france there was another instance where somebody was coming back on a ferry from france literally as they say here and um they were picking up messages from the uk on the ferry and it would have been probably all of these messages as well i haven't actually spoke to them directly but um it it is it's just it was just insane it's like 500 messages in in half a day it was it was going really going for it um up in manchester here glad to see it's working bearing in mind i'm down down, down south here so message from Manchester and as I say most of the users in that chat were all able to see each other's messages so it wasn't just like you're firing messages into the ether and you don't know if anyone's heard it obviously there would be some situations where that would happen maybe you know you are really on the fringe of coverage and that sort of stuff but um, for the most part the engagement was absolutely brilliant everybody was just having a right old good time and that's what the kind of mesh was always what I kind of wanted it to be really so um <laughs> you know it's it's really it's been really really good to see just a lot of fun a lot of banter and just overall good times it's kind of funny how it kind of lasted the weekend and then it kind of petered out towards sunday and then monday it's been super quiet today but anyway how did meshcore cope with this amount of traffic 
um, you know, multiple repeaters seeing each other, you know, so like multiple paths for messages to go and just it could have caused an absolute gridlock. Why did this actually work? This is a really good stress test for MeshCore when we're trying to develop this system and make it as good as it can be. Now, what's interesting is we have, since we've moved to the new narrow preset, so the 62.5 bandwidth, the, you know, spreading factor eight and the coding rate eight, you know, debating, depending on where you, where you are, you can reduce that coding rate. And also moving the operating frequency to the higher end of a really well-used uh, radio band, like 869.525 is the kind of centre um, of, of this band. And it's just home to just hundreds of other things that cause interference. So since we've moved to the edge of the band, it's actually made things just a whole lot better. It's just absolutely game-changing. Um, and that has meant that this sort of thing is possible because there isn't as much interference there. So the packets are freely able to kind of propagate. They're not getting blocked out by other transmissions and things are able to like work the best. I think the, the highest number of hops I saw was about 20 hops, which if you kind of know how this stuff works, 20 hops is, is just insane. That's hopping through 20 repeaters and a message is getting there and you can actually reply to that person um, 20 hops away. It's just, just absurd. But why is this working and say some, something like Meshtastic probably doesn't? I mean, it's definitely not going to be working because Meshtastic is limited um, with the amount of hops it has. But um, I think mainly it is because it's the flood routing that we use is actually pure and it just allows anything to repeat. Every repeater that can hear another repeater will repeat the message if it hasn't already. So you end up with this situation where a message will just go out and the bigger that mesh is, the more paths there are for that message to actually reach its destination. You know, in the app, you've, if you play with the app, you can actually see that a message has arrived at your node from multiple different destinations. And I think just the fact that everything can hear everything, it just builds in resiliency. And that's why it was actually working so well. But it doesn't jam up. And that's the kind of, that's the crazy thing that I thought would happen would be um, it would you'd get a lot of collisions and you'd find that people it would just jam up. People wouldn't be able to communicate, but it didn't. And it's, it's, it's madness. And you'd only know this from testing this out in this real kind of environment where potentially this is emulating what is going to happen with MeshCore probably in the next, I don't know, five months, something like that, where the, we're going to reach a point where there are just repeaters within range of each other from the south of England all the way to the north of England. And I mean, if it works like this, in this situation, I really don't think we're gonna have a problem with with um, with the amount of users. As I say, MeshCore is very, very light on its toes when it comes to um, transmitting stuff that it doesn't need to transmit. It doesn't transmit telemetry out all the time. It doesn't advertise itself automatically. Uh, repeaters do, but mostly uh, you need to set your repeater to 12 hour is the new default for repeater adverts. So if you haven't done that already, um, set your repeater adverts to 12 hours, uh, zero help ones turn off to zero. Um, so yeah, th that's one of the reasons because it's purely the bandwidth is purely being used for the messaging and it's just it's just worked which is very very interesting so you know we can dig more into um you know the 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 kind of things that we could do to make this better a few people were saying about you know the um the repeater ids you get clashes because you can start seeing repeaters with the same ids miles away that really isn't a problem because unless you're unless you have lots of repeaters with the same id in an area it, it's not a problem what it does is just causes inconvenience with the uh with the names of the repeaters you start seeing you know completely different names on the on the repeaters than what they actually really are because there's multiple repeaters so in some ways we probably should just remove the names from the repeaters in the traces to make it um you know not confusing but People like to see that on their own local mesh anyway, so that's that's probably going to stay like that for now. Um, but yeah, really interesting. There was other, one other thing that happened. I managed to get a message, and this was purely by luck and fluke, um, into South Germany. We received an Andy out of Hartford in South Germany. Um, it's definitely me. C0 is not actually Alpine Core. 
in my area, it is my Hartford Omni. Uh, 37s probably down this end as well, which is Epin B7, which is DDRC, I think, over over this way. Um, but yeah, so <laughs> I don't know how this happened, but one freak message made Germany, which is just, uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, absolutely insane so in all this craziness there were a few people out there that were kind of worried about you know how many nodes they had in their um, contact list because obviously by default your contact list just gets filled up with whoever's kind of been picked up in the area and beyond so you can imagine what happens when this phenomenon happens you end up with hundreds of nodes in your contact list and you end up um, jamming up your node so the best thing to do with this is if you go over to if I show you my contact list there's hardly anyone in there and the reason for that is that what I've done is I'm now using the discover list um, as a way of seeing you know every device and this is how it's always been intended to be used but basically in the discover contacts you'll see every device that's been picked up you know since the beginning of time of your device and these are saved on your on your phone so there's no limit so the thing with this is your phone or your android device or whatever you're running the app on has to be near the node um, your companion radio connected by bluetooth for this to fill up otherwise this won't show the number of devices and that's because we're using obviously the the memory of the phone and the uh, memory of the the app to actually um, store all of these um, devices and now with the addition of the map view which is what i showed you earlier you can actually see all of the anything that's been picked up on the, on the, this map so this is the best way to sort of go forward now because it's getting super busy use the discover list to just discover notes that's how what we intended it to be from the beginning um, and then use your contact list for basically people that you want to com communicate with directly um, direct messaging and managing your own repeaters as well so to get this to work properly you need to turn off auto contacts and that is in your contact settings auto add contact you'll see more on there is unticked and so it's not going to add everything that it receives into your contact list and that is the best way i would advise to sort of go forward with this um the other thing we i mentioned was about um having adverts on 12 hours for repeaters so if we look at my repeater here um you log into that with the admin password go into settings go into advert intervals so if you just hit that you should be able to retrieve your interval so zero hop set to zero there's no point having a zero hop you know really these days it's not really worth having that on um, and then on your auto advert flood uh, set that to 12 hours and that will minimize traffic from your repeater across the mesh make more room for messages help growth all that kind of stuff so that's how you would set um, your repeaters up I would advise doing that I know that there's a few out there that haven't because I keep seeing lots of repeaters pinging in over that period where it was really busy so <laughs> but anyway it was still working fine so yeah whatever but um, now we know mesh core scales which is something that the other one doesn't hope you've enjoyed this one guys thanks to everybody that has participated in this weekend I mean it's totally off the, I didn't know it was going to happen until I looked at the um, tropo forecast map so that's another thing I'll leave in the description that tropo forecast uh, map that I think I think it was rich um, shout out to you RJV you sent me that I didn't know that where that was on the internet so that's just that map with all the funky colored swirly bits on it and um, that shows you what areas will be kind of you know connected theoretically predictions basically so don't take it as gospel but it seems pretty correct actually normally this happens in like high pressure um kind of environments like we've been high pressure in the uk for for a little while now um <laughs> <laughs> it could be a joke there, couldn't there? But anyway, guys, it's been an absolute blast on this over this weekend. Um, again, thanks to everyone that's kind of participated in this. And um, yeah, hopefully it'll happen again soon. Meanwhile, join the Discord, do all the usual stuff there. Hit like, subscribe. Yeah, make sure you subscribe to the Meshcore channel, not just Meshcore channel, but also mine, the Andy Kirby channel. And um, yeah, catch you next time.